In today's video, we'll be doing a recap of the top seven science experiments to do at home that went wrong, including breaking a toilet with slime, trying out pills that change your taste buds, and lots of other things that were either painful or destructive, and more things you guys dared me to do in the comment section. Crazy mother For this first science experiment that went wrong, it's something I've complained about a million times, and that is the first time I made toilet slime. This was an utter fail. This isn't even really slime at this point. It's not very bendable. It's like too hard. I guess that's the result of using too much borax. See, the thing is about it now is that when you break it, it doesn't really come back together. It's more like a styrofoam or something. The slime got all messed up and then my toilet committed suicide. All right, well now I get to do the incredibly fun part of trying to unclog my toilet. <laughs> Oh dear God. Yes! Go down. Go down. Go down. Next up is a point in my life when I realized that slime just breaks everything. I can't explain it. I had an abundance of fluffy slime left over from another experiment, and I wanted to see what would happen if you blend it. That looks like a pretty healthy amount. Time to make blue slime smoothies. Okay, not a lot is happening with it so far, so we're gonna add in some water and see if we can get this blender to work. Now I'm thinking with the added water in here, we should have enough extra space to where the thing can spin around and actually get cut up a little bit. So fingers crossed, let's hope this works. I think that what you're hearing in the background is my blender actually dying. It's doing some really weird stuff over here. Oh my God, my blender's smoking. The blender is smoking. Okay, I better just turn this off. Wow. There's actually smoke coming out of the blender. Holy shit. That must have burnt out the motor. That's crazy. Look at that, it's all coming out from the bottom and stuff. Why did it break my blender? What the hell did it do that for? That's insane. I have no idea why that happened, but I guess now you know, do not try to make this in the blender. Let's try to examine what we have here though. That looks like slime. It actually just kind of like brought it back to life. That's pretty cool. It might have even made the slime better. What the fuck? How, how did it, how does it do that? Look at that. Look at how droopy the slime is though, but it all still completely sticks together. That's insane. Next up was an experiment that I did with flavor tripping pills. They're made out of God knows what, but it actually changes the way that food tastes. It makes sour food sweet and vice versa. So I wanted to see what it would do with something spicy. Unfortunately for me, I went right for the hottest thing imaginable and I paid the price. But not crazy enough, I'm onto my fourth tripping berry. Or flavor tripping berry. All right, you know what? I wanna go straight for the real thing right now. I wanna go right for the capsicum. I wanna find out what this does. I've got a bunch of other food sitting next to me here, but this is what I'm really curious about. If these tripping berries can save me from having my tongue boiled off by this stuff, then I will definitely owe the inventor a big thank you. Cause whoever invented this shit is trying to kill me. This stuff has warnings all over it. Avoid sensitive areas, wash hands after use, use sparingly on food and cooking. All right, I really, really gotta hope that these tripping berries can save me from this stuff. Okay, that's still hot. <laughs> oh, ah, these tripping berries did nothing. <laughs> Woo. Okay, I'm just gonna sit here and take it. Woo. Okay, I'm just gonna say a little prayer to the flavor tripping gods. Ho, 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 ho. Woo. Yeah, ho. Oh. I got the hiccups now already. Oh man. These things did nothing. Nothing. Oh. I got a bad batch. Oh. I'm having a bad flavor trip. Oh my gosh. Okay, I gotta get some water. Oh my gosh. It does say to eat spicy peppers with the stuff, but obviously it did not mean anything that spi spicy. Oh my god, my mouth my mouth is on fire. Seriously, I thought that the flavor tripping berries were gonna help me at first. That was really dumb. <sighs> really dumb. Now I've had really hot hot and spicy stuff before, but that was like getting a surprise. The flavor tripping berries worked really, really well all the way up until that. Although it doesn't suggest to use anything this hot, it says chili. It says to use a chili pepper. Oh my god, my mouth is on fire. <gasps> oh. 
Okay, well, that was a bad idea. I just had to rinse my mouth out with milk for about a half an hour. I was not expecting that to be spicy, even though it is pure capsicum. I was thinking that I would eat that and the flavor berries would just I keep calling them flavor berries. I thought that the flavor tripping tablets were going to protect me against things that were super spicy. I guess I was wrong about that. I've had this stuff before and it's not really hot sauce. It's really just more like, um, it's basically a bottle of pepper spray. And um, I just think that there's probably not enough tripping berries out there to turn this into anything other than the spiciest thing in the world. So yeah, I guess I learned my lesson there. Next up was something relatively simple. It was just taking a slime bath. But like usual, I had to completely overdo it and slime broke more of my stuff. I'm getting used to that. Okay, well I may have accidentally drag like a gallon of slime through my ears and through my eyes. It says do not ingest on the package, but I can definitely feel a lot of the slime trying to creep up my bunghole. My head feels like it's just mostly slime at this point. Okay, to be honest, guys, this was fun and all, but it's it's actually beginning to get pretty unbearable. It's like I can't, I literally can't open my eyes! Oh my god! That was slime bath to the extreme. Don't put the powder directly on yourself. That was definitely where I made the mistake. Yeah. And even though I'm in a lot of pain right now, I gotta admit, this stuff is still kind of fun to play with. Yeah. Yeah. But it's not gonna be fun to clean up or try to get out of my eyes. All right, I'm gonna let this stuff drain out now. Just, I can't even see at this point. I definitely feel like we reached the breaking point because I am completely blind. I'm going completely on sound and touch right now <laughs> and unfortunately taste. Yeah, don't get this stuff in your mouth. Okay, time to try to rinse it all off. Well, all right guys, we did it. We did the impossible. They said it couldn't be done, but we have completely clogged my bathtub entirely using slime bath. It's not draining at all. I just took a shower in there and the water level actually rised. It didn't go down at all. I had the drain open. Yeah, I think that we met our breaking point that I was talking about earlier. We always seem to find it. Just never know when it's gonna be. Next up, I thought I would myth bust the idea that if you pee on a fly swatter, it will shock you. So I ran a few tests, which made me think it was safe. But unfortunately for me, that myth turned out to be real. So for this dare, I'm gonna be peeing on an electric fly swatter. But first I wanted to test this thing out to see how much it would actually shock me. Because I have a suspicion that it's not actually gonna shock me at all. I don't think this is going to work. Maybe that's just me being naive or stupid, but so to test it out first What I'm gonna be doing is using this cup of water right here I'm gonna put my fingers into the water and pour it on the electric fly swatter And if it shocks my fingers while I'm pouring it It'll give me a good idea if it's gonna shock me or not while I'm peeing on it And I thought it would be a fun little test just to see beforehand how it works or if it works at all Your guess is as good as mine I mean, do you think this is gonna work? Before I do it, just leave it in the comment section I'm betting that it's not gonna even shock me, but if it does, it does. We'll see Did it already shorten out? It did not shock me, although you saw an electrical spark, but I didn't feel anything with my fingers. But maybe that's just because the water is only connected by two fingers, whereas if I'm pissing on it, it's gonna be more connected to everything else inside of me. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> that, that sounds kind of dumb. But this test did not work. I did not get shocked. I've got several bug zappers here, so we're gonna try this thing out. I'm gonna use this one, which I have not used yet. It has not gotten wet. It's got brand new batteries in it. Um, so if I shorted this one out in the process, it'll be okay. All right, now before I potentially burn my urethra shut, I'm gonna test this out one more time with some water. If it doesn't shock my hand, it leads me to believe that maybe, maybe I won't end up burning my urethra shut. We won't know until we give it a try. Okay. All right, I'm pretty confident. Ah, shit! Ah! Okay. Oh! It works! That definitely works! Oh! Well guys, that's definitely a body mod I do not suggest that you try at home. To be honest, it does not work every time. The first time I tried it, it did nothing, so I decided I'd give it another shot. But I'm definitely glad to be putting this one behind me. Burnt urethra and all. And that being said, we'll be on to the next air. Next up, I was trying out an experiment called elephant toothpaste, which worked flawlessly. However, it did ruin yet another wall in my house, which means I'm almost out of walls. So, <clears throat> we're gonna try that again, only this time we're just gonna eyeball the ingredients a little bit differently. And we're gonna be using the power of bleach. No, I'm just kidding, this is actually just a bleach container, but that's what we got, that's what we're going with. Right, last time the potassium iodide mixed up really easily, so I'm thinking maybe we should have had more of that. Now adding in a hydrogen peroxide, add in some soap, then we're going to add in some red food dye. Alright, let's see what happens. Okay, yeah! Alright, yes! I'm stoked that actually did something! Yes! There's just something that's really oddly satisfying about that. This one seemed to work a hell of a lot better. 
Whatever I did was just awesome. This is never gonna stop, oh my god. <laughs> So that was pretty cool. That was definitely a lot more like the lab version I was going for. I mean, the thing is still spitting out elephant toothpaste. I think that's pretty cool. It may do this for hours. I have no idea. <laughs> but one thing that does suck is that I've got all of this stuff all over my wall now. Uh, I'm gonna have to paint that now. Next up, I made some armor out of duct tape and asked Kristen to shoot me with a BB gun. And she is usually a pretty good shot, but somehow she managed to miss the armor completely and just shoot me right in the shoulder. So I'm gonna let Kristen get three shots at me with the BB gun. As much as I would like to test out the durability of this helmet, something tells me that's not a smart idea. So I'm gonna be taking all three of these in the abdomen. Kristen, are you ready? I am so ready. I bet. <laughs> ready? Yep. <laughs> Didn't pop. More gun mishaps. All Ow. right. I don't know. Give it a shot. All right, give me a pop. No! Whoa. Oh my god! It stopped the BB! It stopped the BB! Yes! I found it! Yeah! Did it hurt though? Uh, I mean, I could feel it definitely. I could definitely feel it pop, but that would have definitely gone into my skin had I not been wearing this. That's awesome. This is a BB proof suit, y'all. I mean, if you're playing war as a kid or something, this is what you want. BB gun wars are no fun, especially if you're on the losing end, and some duct tape armor might just save the day. All right, I'm ready for shot number two. Ready for pop number two. Ow! Oh! <laughs> oh! God! Ow, oh, that one hurt! My helmet's ripping out my hair. Damn it! Oh, that one really hurt. It didn't go in now. It didn't go in. It stopped it, but it did not stop it from hurting, so I gotta say that. All right, so the first one didn't really hurt. The second one hurt like hell. I'm gonna see if this thing can protect a shot to the chest. I'm gonna let Kristen hit me in my pec. All right, give me a go. Ow! You got me in the shoulder! Ow! She missed! Ow! How do you miss? Oops. Ow! Ow, that hurts so bad! Oopsies. <laughs> I'm starting to think that was not an accident. Yeah, right there. Oh, wow. Yeah, wow! <laughs> well, I think that Kristen has found a flaw in the armor. Um, I should have put some sleeves on this thing. Who, who knew that your arms would be so important? And finally, the last experiment, I was trying to fix a golf ball with a lighter. And as many people pointed out, I put the lighter way too close, which I guess turns the ping pong ball into napalm. This next segment is actually kind of more of a life hack. But I also think it's a pretty cool science experiment because it demonstrates how heat can expand the air. So what I'm gonna be doing is hopefully showing you guys how to fix a ping pong ball. So first thing, all you need is a busted ping pong ball. So I just dented my thumb into that pretty hard. Then supposedly all you do is hold your lighter to it and it pops back out, which actually kind of makes sense. But I've never tried it before, so let's test it out. Okay, so here we have the dented ping pong ball and I'm just gonna hold a lighter to it and try not to burn my fingers and hopefully the thing pops out. Oh, okay. That did not work. <laughs> I was not expecting that at all. I wish I had left the camera more zoomed out. I tried to stomp the flame out and it was just like exploding all over the place. So in short, if you're looking for some kind of really cheap firework that just makes a whole bunch of mess and is impossible to extinguish like napalm, ping pong ball is the way to go. How many of you guys knew that was gonna happen? I've never tried to light a lighter to a ping pong ball before. Is that, is that normal? I need, I have to do some research on this. I, Cause I just read the life hack. Maybe that was just like a clever prank. I don't know, that's, it got me, I gotta say. <laughs> I kinda wanna do it again just to show you guys like actually what happened. And yes, I know I need to get a haircut and yes, I know I need to shave. Then putting it off so that I can make more time to burn my house down. Okay, so right now I'm gonna be attempting the exact same thing that I tried inside with the ping pong ball, but I've got the camera panned out a little bit so you can actually see what these ping pong balls do. Cause I think it's pretty crazy. I don't know, a part of me just doesn't want you guys to think I was over exaggerating when I told the story about it. Look at that, look. It just spun, it just completely combusts. Oh my God. That's what I mean. I, I totally thought that was out. It, honestly, I need to go and put that in some water now. That was just like a good show of how unpredictable that could be. So don't try that life hack at home. Depending on what kind of ping pong balls you have, it could start a crazy fire. Uh, that being said, we're on to the next dare. And guys, I'm always up for a good challenge, so make sure to leave me your dares in the comment section. Like the video, subscribe if you've yet to have done that. And as always, I'll be seeing you guys as soon as possible with a new video. All right, thanks guys. Bye. Yeah.